Hello, I'm Michael Panceroli, and I'm part of the National Partner Technology Strategist Team, uh, which is in the U.S. Channel Development. And this month, our Office 365 technical community uh, is featuring Fast Track Getting Started as our monthly theme. And in this screencast, I wanted to go into how you get started with your Fast Track portal and the types of things you can expect. But before we jump in, I just wanted to uh, show you the deploy.office.com uh, website. So this is the Office 365 Deployment Center. And this is uh, really the um, external experience or the public facing website. And there's some great information about um, fast track and getting started. And if you click on this getting started link, you can uh, walk through here and um, customers can start uh, sign up for a trial and see how they can get started with fast track and what the fast track um, trial actually contains uh, with this getting started content. Now, while it's possible to self serve uh, in here and get this into an existing tenant, um, what we really would like is for you as partners to be able to guide them through that process. And we see a ton of value with you engaging with them to be able to actually deliver that you know, to them and for them and with them uh, during that process. So I just wanted to point that out. And now we'll go ahead and take a look uh, and jump right into the actual fast track portal. And here we are on the fast track portal. You can see on the upper left hand side in a portal.fasttrack.office.com. And as a partner, you come in when you get to that address, uh, you will see a partner login. And once you enter your credentials, you get to this overview landing page. You can see uh, some general information here uh, around planning. You could add a customer uh, on the bottom and also here up on the top. Uh, and when you click on the My Customers tab, uh, you can see uh, a few um, trial customers that I have. But imagine if you had dozens of these uh, on the left hand side, you could click on some filters there to uh, filter by ones that are in pilot or maybe new customers or other ones that might be in deployment. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on one of these existing ones. And oh, by the way, yeah, so when you add a new customer, uh, it will first ask you for the customer name. You uh, type in the customer name if it doesn't exist. Uh, you'll go ahead and, and add a new one, some basic general information, a PSX ID, and then uh, you'll make a decision whether to you know, provision uh, the, the, con the content or uh, add an existing uh, portal if you'd like. So once that's all done and created and you have your tenant, I'm going to click into the uh, tin sheet one and I can see information uh, around my customer, uh, what the address is, uh, who my contacts are. And then there's some information, uh, just some status down here about the actual trial. You can see a start date and a completion date, the number of days engaged. And this actually gets populated. If you don't see any on yours right away, uh, that's because it's actually associated with the deployment plan. So as you go ahead and complete the deployment plan, uh, that's when you'll start to see this information getting filled in. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, if I click Offers, uh, you'll see information about all the offers that are available to you. So here's the adoption offer, the deployment offer, uh, deployment planning services. And then down below uh, the fold here, you'll see information on how to get uh, those pilot kits and also the excitement kits. And that little redeem now, you click on that uh, and that will actually launch you uh, into a request form that will be part of you being able to uh, take advantage and get uh, funding for those offers. You see a little bit uh, around um, the eligibility and what the funding is, and then here's where you go ahead and create your request. If I click into permissions, uh, here's where you as a partner will be able to add yourself to the uh, tenant and additional users. And then down here in deployment plans, uh, here's where uh, there's a nice uh, wizard. Uh, they've done some work here and built in these wizards to go ahead and just kind of walk you through the deployment plans and create these wizards. So it's, it's super important to be able to um, capture this deployment information early in the process. And so um, these basically come in two flavors. There's the preliminary. Uh, which uh, is, you know, usually associated with like the three day engagement. And there's about 20 questions in there and I'll walk you through and talk about kind of what you're deploying. And then 
there's a detailed one. And this typically corresponds to that 10 day engagement. So it's going to ask you questions around uh, mailboxes, you know, their size, geographic location. Um, you know, there'll be up to about 300 questions in there. Usually you wind up completing about 80 of them. And uh, it'll maybe, you know, take you uh, two to four hours to complete the form, but uh, it may take you up to 10 days to actually uh, find out all that information. And then when you're done, uh, you can export that out as a, as a Word document. You can use that as a deliverable to the customer, and you can also um, use that as a, a deliverable for your deployment planning services engagement. So as I said, it's very important to get that done. Uh, then it gets handed off to the engineering uh, center, and then uh, the engineering center knows that you're the partner that's engaged, and then um, customer you know, winds up uh, purchasing and then off to the uh, onboarding center and they do their job and then you pick it up back, pack up a little bit later. So that's the planning service. If you click on this, it'll actually uh, launch the, the wizard. You can see how you can click, uh, click through that. Uh, jump to a, uh, a particular section, uh, walk back and forth, and it'll just keep track of uh, all that status. Uh, if you click on the uh, readiness, uh, that will actually give you information about um, your, uh, your customers and how they're actually doing on the trial, uh, if they're engaged, uh, if they're actually uh, using it and being able to um, take advantage of some of the labs that are there. Uh, which we'll show you when we get uh, started on some of the content. So here in the resources, you can see some information on uh, the adoption offer, if you want to watch some presentations on that. And then this is a lot more exciting here in the lab section. So these are actual um, hands-on labs that are available to you. Now, these are not uh, click-through labs. These are actually hosted in Azure. And the way you start out is that you bring your own Azure subscription. So maybe you have a uh, MSDN uh, subscription where you get like $150 a month uh, Azure credit. You'll go ahead and associate a uh, subscription ID and then you can uh, start provisioning these labs. They'll take maybe up to, you know, uh, a few minutes to provision those. So you see I've got things in here like deploying an Office 365 ply, uh, pilot, uh, installing click to run, uh, cutover migration, and so on. And here's one that I'm working on, deploy Office 365 with ADFS. So you just uh, click on this link to either provision or uh, resume the lab. And I'm going to click over here where you can see I've got it started. And so here's the lab running. So I've got a couple of boxes. I've got a domain controller, and I also have a client. And then if you have two screens, you just go ahead and click on pop out and maybe put that on your second screen. So you see the environment is really just like, you know, the hands-on labs that maybe you've uh, done at uh, TechEd or one of the, the conferences. And if I, uh, just to show you uh, for fun over here in my Azure subscription, uh, you'll see there's a, a couple of um, lab client uh, boxes that are running here in my Azure subscription, and I can just go ahead and remote into them. There's really uh, nothing special about them. They're just uh, virtual machines. So that's a quick run through of the uh, Fast Track portal. And now we'll um, take you over into um, the actual environment that the customer sees. So here, back on my My Customers tab, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one of these tenants. We'll take a look at the BLR Aerospace and get an idea of what that getting started content looks like uh, from the customer perspective. So over on the tenant, I've logged in as somebody that I have designated as an IT administrator. And what actually happens is it actually uh, provisions a site collection inside of your Fast Track portal. So just so you can go ahead and, and see this, uh, let me go ahead and go over to the SharePoint uh, admin piece and I'll see my list of site collections and you'll see there's actually a fast track site collection. So you can just go to your tenant name, uh, you know, forward slash sites, forward slash fast track, and you'll be able to access the same content that we're taking a look at. So I'll go ahead and click on that and we'll get uh, to my getting started content. And the first thing that you're going to see is that we're going to land on getting started for IT. 
So getting started for IT um, contains uh, fast track uh, tasks, uh, pilot, project plan, uh, change management guidance, technical training labs, video learning, and, and much more. So for example, here I have uh, fast track tasks. Uh, this will actually kind of walk you through uh, the whole fast track process and they're literally SharePoint tasks that you can complete. We actually had a question uh, on our Yammer uh, group. So hopefully uh, you're watching and can see how you go ahead and where you can access that information. And there are a number of IT um, scenarios, so implementation and training and, and management. And uh, as we mentioned, there's like some, some video uh, labs. So these are not the Azure labs. These are actually um, click through guidance on how to uh, get your customers started uh, with, with fast track. Um, yeah, so there are just various um, scenarios for uni users to, to get started along uh, the right way. Um, and one of the things you'll see, this is basically the same left hand navigation, uh, but here's where you can access the video learning and the training labs. But then you notice this little uh, management uh, link here uh, over on the bottom of getting started for IT. If I click on that, what that's going to do, that's actually going to launch the new fast track management app. And you'll see there's a couple of uh, scenarios that are already provisioned for you. Uh, the getting started content and the getting started for IT. And then there are some uh, initial uh, additional scenarios down a little bit lower. And so you can hover over these and if you wanted to provision additional content or additional scenarios, things like uh, HR, internal communications, as you can see here, legal, R&D operations and sales and marketing, you could just go ahead and click on this add now and that will actually go ahead and provision this site content into your fast track uh, portal site uh, collection. So what we're trying to do is we're really trying to uh, land this content in SharePoint you know, early in the process to really help you drive uh, usage and, and, and consumption. And it's content that's pulling from you know, all of our resources you know, into the customer site to really help um, them visualize and for you to explain uh, you know, what, what's possible. So uh, here are the different scenarios. And then once we do, you can kind of click here to explore. But what really happens is if I go back to my uh, site, you'll see that it shows up in the, uh, the navigation. So now under scenarios, uh, you'll see HR, internal communications. Uh, I can click through that. And you see a lot of um, helps and tricks on how to get, get started. So you see I've got some company policies. I've got a couple of sub scenarios in here, being able to keep everybody informed and also to be able to onboard uh, new employees. There's some uh, videos and there's some guides. So I encourage you to go ahead and uh, check all that content out and these nice little self-help, uh, their uh, little pointers on how to actually get started and, and, and use this content. So this is great stuff, you know, but I, I want to make clear this is not, you know, uh, you know, customer immersion experience or mech as we have here in the United States. This is not an overhaul of, uh, you know, demo content. It's really getting started materials. It's really to um, have you as a partner um, kind of do some visualization and envisioning with your customer to really help them uh, take the next step. Uh, it's also a great spot where if you want to actually add on to this, maybe you want to try out a couple of your uh, customer uh, customizations and show them what that might be like and do some, um, you know, uh, POC and, and mock-ups. You know, this could be a good place where you can do that kind of envisioning uh, with some work. The last thing I wanted to cover is the getting started for users content. I mentioned in the beginning that it was getting started for IT, and here's also, here's also the getting started for users. Now, the team actually did some content targeting so that if you add a regular standard user, not one that you designated as an IT pro, they will get access to this content. That's really all they'll see. They won't see the getting started for IT. And in here, there's various scenarios uh, to really help get them started. 
Uh, if the content looks familiar, it's uh, pretty much identical to the type of content that we have on the Discover SharePoint site. So they'll see scenarios in here like store, sync, and share your content.